Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of I Chongqing's channel. This is Echo Chen and our guest today, Shen Dalin, with us. In today's live stream, we are about to take you to review on this newly released new energy vehicle in China, the Avatar 11, which was officially launched in August with three new configuration models priced at 50,000 to 64,000 US dollars. The vehicle is a large five-seat SUV and it rivals at Tesla Model Y, Neo ES7, and Xiaopeng G9, not to mention the CHM platform that has jointly created by Chang'an Automobile, Huawei, and contemporary Aprex technology company LTD, aka CATL. Join us today, our idiot at Fully Charged Show and China Driver, who is a great content creator based in Shanghai, and he produces videos that are mostly about the EVs of China. And this is his channel, we can see. If you guys are interested, please check on this. And this, okay, these are great content. And our guest today is Chen Dalin, the senior manager of the uh, avatar of the product line. So welcome. In this episode, Elliot will do a dynamic test run in the park and he and Joey Huang, the user experience expert and Elliot will introduce the uh, features of the vehicle for us. Um, also, we will be talking about the EV industry and other renewable energy and intelligent connected te technology in Chongqing in China. So stay tuned, like, share and subscribe. Okay, before we started, I'm gonna introduce guys to you some information about Chongqing's EV industry, because if you are a follower of our channel, you probably would notice that I produce some live stream shows and videos about the topic of the EVs and the relative technology. The reason that we are constantly trying to promote this field is because Chongqing is one of the most important automobile manufacturing bases nationwide. And this city is building a world-class intelligent, connected, and new energy vehicle industry cluster. This might sound very ambitious, but we sure have some confidence. Let's see. The first thing is, in recent years, this city's auto industry has accelerating in transformation and upgrading to the new energy and intelligent connected. We have some data about this. You know, in 2021, the production of new energy vehicles and intelligent connected uh, network vehicles is 152,000 and 300,000 units, an increase of 252% and 25%. From January to July this year, the production of new energy vehicles in intelligent network vehicles is 168,000 in 183,000, an increase of 161.7% and 22.4%. And the growth rate of the new energy vehicle production is higher than the national by 47.3 percentage points. Second, the city is accelerating the promotion and ab application of EVs. In the month of July, Chongqing's new energy passenger vehicle com market penetra penetration rate reached 29%, four percentage points higher than the national rate, and 13.5% times higher than in 2018. Also, we have the leading intelligent networked vehicle test environment that has been built. This is a video uh, in Yongchang district of Chongqing. Driverless cars here are operating for the first time for fee. You know, Chongqing and Wuhan are the only pilot city in China for this implementation. Let's watch this video, okay? It's a short one. <laughs> You know, Chongqing has built the very advanced battery swapping EV application scenarios. This was me doing a live stream in the battery swapping station and interviewing like this. This is this was me in the live stream. If you want want to check out, it's on Night Chongqing's channel. 
and we are interviewing drivers in the battery swapping EVs in another stations. They are really familiar and satisfied with this technology of pigmentation. And we have more high-end EV brands like Neo, Geely, Chang'an, Series, and Lixiang um, have achieved cluster development. Their products are prestigious. They build manufacturers' bases in Chongqing. You know, like just like this, this one, and this one. And also, the sales of pure electric logistics e vehicles rank first, like this one, Weichi and second in China, respectively. Also, the cities has basically formed a relati relatively complete new energy supply chain system. And above all this information and data, you can see that this city is catching up with the advanced area in EV field and worldwide. The newly released Avatar 11 it is today's great example to show you how this city is participating in this intensive com competition of this industry. So without further ado, let's take a look on what Elliot and Joey is doing right now in Shanghai. Hi, hey guys. Hey. Hello. Hi. So can you briefly introduce yourself and your channel to us, Elliot? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Elliot Richards. I'm the host of China Driver on YouTube, uh, and I'm also a presenter on the Fully Charged Show, also on YouTube, reviewing a lot of electric cars here in, in China and renewable energy uh, uh, projects as well. Okay, thank you. Um, how about you, Joey? Can you introduce yeah. you yourself? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Joe Huang from uh, User Experience Team. And I'm here, like, like you do, you know, I'm the host in this camp. <laughs> so uh, I will jo I join with uh, Elliot to show you guys how amazing this car is and how amazing this camp is. Okay, let's get started. We are looking forward to see this while you guys getting on the car. And we have checked on these comments in our channel and on Elliot's channel. And everybody is totally excited about this so let's get started okay okay let's go so, for a drive right okay so you are now in the uh, uh exception center it's like a park of this uh test drive test drive test drive area right we can see yeah that's right so, yeah they set up parking. maybe 30 okay. cars there i think oh so what will you do next? So there's a there's a course over here. If you just have a look around, mm -hmm. and they've got a speed oh. test. Uh, we're going to do a slalom test. We're going to see how the car manages on a slope, on 25 degree slope. Uh, kind of just test wow. out the the functions of the car uh, on this test track. It's just started raining, which is a mm. uh, great weather to do yeah. testing. So uh, it's going to be yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so gonna are they the getting people today to run the test? Because I know this car is really uh, famous now and as it was launched uh, last month. And I think I, I've heard that there are many people apply for try this driving test, you know. Right. Yeah, so far it's about over now and Joey, 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 your audio is quite a bit loud to us, and please say a little bit louder. It might be because you guys are sharing um, one headset, so your voice is lower, volume is lower. Over a thousand people test drive this car yeah, from uh, 9 September. Uh, oh. So actually, people guess a lot of feedback that this car is worth driving worth having and it's an amazing car so yeah uh, we cannot wait to drive it drive it out yeah me too so make sure everyone's got their seat belts on yeah right. <laughs> these lovely lovely yellow seat yeah. belts i haven't i haven't actually driven this yet this is my first time to drive it we've been around mm -hmm. the course once with the instructor but this has been my first first experience so i suppose we should just get going right yeah so uh you can just start with the pedal right it's on the brake yeah, and then just brake. down yes 
Let me just to see. Oh, here. Ah, got to move the card into place. Right, and right. now you're we're ready. The, you're in the sport mode. Okay. So actually, it's the fastest way to to test the acceleration, <laughs> and the brake is really accurate. So you need to press it. You know, the really hard. Right, really hard. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first test we're going to do is the speed test. So I suppose mm -hmm. if we're all ready, we ready? Right, ready. Okay. Okay. Go to the left. Wow. Right. You might need to hold a grip or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fast. Yeah, we're just telling the cameraman he needs to hold on because yes, it's. <laughs> so, uh, how, how about the coach? Uh, where is the stop sign that we need to hit the brake on? Yeah, well, actually, uh, you just do a full acceleration uh -huh. and you break, you do a full break with your legs. Okay. Uh, uh, at the traffic light. At the traffic light. Okay. So, you, when you uh, meet the traffic light, you hit the brake. Yes, the full, right? Okay. Okay, is everyone ready? Right, ready. Ready. Okay. Ready. I'm always nervous about this, but I suppose let's just go. Okay, ready? I'm ready. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what speed we got up to. I wasn't looking. I was looking at the road, but uh, the brakes are pretty good, aren't they? Right. The brake is uh, the Grembo caliber with the four pistol. Voice was lost. Okay. Zero to 60 in what? 3.98 seconds? 3.98. But I mean, this is a shorter road, so maybe you're not hitting. Uh, it's like 80 or something. 80, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, guys, can you hear? Because I've got some reactions about our audios on um, studio. Can you guys hear us? Can you hear me? Because sometimes I, I think I got, I lost your audio right now. I can't hear you guys, but I see you really clearly. I'm thinking that if you guys can just take off the uh, Air AirPods, just use the can use the phone to do the audio, and it what might be. Sure, sure. Okay. Can you hear? Yes. So can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, loud and clearly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, I think this so, is the way. Okay. All right, we're going we're gonna to carry on. So what's the next test that we're doing? Oh, we're uh, just turning left. Yeah. You're meeting like uh, several speed bumps. Okay. Like you're driving normally on the road, yep. up and downs. So you will feel the uh, uh, the uh, comfort and the spotty of the chassis. Which is right. Spending nearly like 2,000 hours right. for the uh, there, road test. There are lots of speed bumps in in China, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you could test drive it and see how it reacts to your, your chassis. It's a very easy ride for what is, you know, it's quite a big, you know, it's not a small car. Mm -hmm. It's not a light car, right. but it feels mm -hmm. much kind of easier to drive than perhaps some of the other big cars I've driven. Yes. So and For your information, this is 5,000 pounds. Easy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so this test is the slalom test. No, the moose test. Yes, the moose test. Yeah, right. yeah. Which the is probably test. the test that I don't like. So we've got to, <laughs> we've got to go quite fast ahead, and then we've got to suddenly turn, and then suddenly turn back. Yes. Uh, right. And I'm always worried about hitting the fence. So should we go? Yes, yeah, let's, yes, go. let's go. <laughs> All right. Whoa. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You can feel that <laughs> the uh, double wishbone on the on the front suspension. Yeah. In the rear, we have the multi-link suspension here, so the balance is really excellent. It was very and it very direct in the feeling of the steering. Like as soon as I turned the wheel, it, 
yeah. very easily turned. Accurate so, and correct. smooth. Oh. Very accurate, very smooth. Okay. And even though this is this is a SUV crossover, right? Right. So it, it doesn't feel, it feels kind of like a saloon. Yeah, right, a saloon or a, a shop or maybe something. Yeah, but yeah, that's right. It. So now we're off the city now. We have okay. set to uh, axle. Okay. So the instructors will uh, guide you. Right. The instructor right now. So, you so he's telling us to go straight. Right, go straight. And then turn. Turn on the left, right. Okay, so this then is go straight, easy and smooth, sound the yeah. yeah. Right. So we're now at 25 degrees, is that right? Yep, about 25 degrees, <laughs> actually 26. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very strange angle for to do a test in, but right. If you, I think yeah, you, I'm gonna take a screenshot for this. It's really a strange angle. <laughs> I feel like if I take off my seatbelt and open the door, I'm gonna fall out. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you are in a special effect of a movie yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, if you look at the the mirror up here, you can see the the angle that we're at, and it's it's kind it's of really crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> really crazy. But the the interesting thing is you you don't hear anything like making any noises because it's, it's quite a stiff chass right. chassis you were telling me earlier right, right. yes exactly. mm. that was very how is that gonna, gonna work mr shen about this quiet system the uh, how to say this the quiet system well actually i mean we from the first hour so, like um, the chess chassis chassis we use a lot of uh, aluminium we have two things to help so our first of all, and the light. Yeah, right. So we use no, those no, lot of no, no, no. our PC and our body side, and after we do this week of the body, more than remember, 30 percent. We have a button. We have two buttons on the right. And right. Yeah. One on the right. We use our this whole body so you can this see we need to drive on. You can see there right. is a blue the on the top left. Yeah. Yeah. There is a gray one. Yeah. 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 Normally, we will, we will call the body the gray. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Think yeah. on yeah. some of the shape. But also, the after you don't want, yeah. want to have it. And also, we use the front later on for later version. We use the rear opening suspension. Was just very well, you can say dangerous driving That's test, right. yeah, yeah. Now, what's that? Uh, 30 degrees view, yeah. We're looking at the camera angles of the uh, so we were just going over quite a difficult uh piece of road and it had mm -hmm. two wheels in the air at the same time, is that right? Um, yeah, narrow. Two wheels it's quite narrow, air. two wheels on the in the air, in the air. In the yeah. air. So, uh, yeah, and so you need you need this three D camera to look around uh, yeah, to see. Also, between the Oh, then you can the see the car like this. All different angles because we have cameras. Ah. So this is showing oh. us exactly where we are right now. This is quite cool. Wow. We can see. We can see fact. all this while you are driving this car all the time, in yeah. real time status. Playing video games right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a video game. And even when what, I turn what? the wheel, it's yeah. turning the wheel. Oh. Okay. Right. Yeah, low speed. Okay. If, if you, I am a client, I bought this. What What's this, you know, function used for when I was driving? Oh, one parking. of the driving skills I will mention are you small parking space. Mm. You need this. You can say front and rear and your left and right side yeah. to make sure you're safe driving. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you can make, you can make, Mention that when you go into a dark small park, mm -hmm. lots of the driver are afraid to drive and you know reverse in in China. But if you have the three hundred sixty two view cameras, you can easily to see all the sides yeah, yeah. around you. Yeah. And see. also when you're driving the road, <laughs> it's bad. You can see oh, like this. Yeah. Yeah. The and the animals, even the kids oh. yeah, on the side of the car. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a really a small vehicle, it's just like no, the other not. EVs. So yeah. it's kind of important when you are parking. Yes. Right. You have to notice the surrounding areas and all this security and safe problems. Yes. Hmm. Okay, our our followers are talking about thank you guys for 
remembering our show about those rapid rapid battery swap facilities for EV cars. Yeah, I, actually, it's a one minute thing when a two minute hope for the whole process when you arrived in the swapping station. Um, I think it's one of the solutions for the EVs. It's not every. It's not all the solutions to swap the battery, right? Yes. So the Avatar Eleven is a charging solution. Well, uh, charging solutions. Okay. And our battery pack has come from CALT,、oh. the world's largest battery company. Wow. Yeah. CALT, I've read. I've read some、uh, news about how this brand have listed、okay. on the global five、uh, hundred、uh, renewable energy enterprises. It's、yep. really a big achievement, you、It、know.、Is. It's worldwide, so it's the battery thing. You know, everybody is really a concern about this problem because when we are talking about a new energy energy vehicle, it connects with how we define it. The, the, the new energy, you know,、yes. the battery is an important thing because、um, how are these wasted battery is going to be, or how we can recycle this, and how we. Can- Really to, you know,、uh, to benefit from the environment. That's or... really a big question. <laughs> I think it's even for the whole world's automotive industry.、Yeah. Uh, now in China or in some of the American or Europeans, we use recycled batteries. It's usually another like a power storage case.、Mm-hmm. So that means we can keep using on the end of the day. The, you know, the battery was really dead,、yeah. and also we do have. Man, and also now in China, in the largest city, in the largest city, we have one of the,、uh, what we call the battery cycle plant to do this job. Wow. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I've heard that there are some rare materials and metals in the battery,、yeah. especially those really expensive battery really, with really advanced technologies、yes. in it. Because it must be a really huge industry to recycle this kind of stuff. It is. It is. Okay, guys. You so we can see you finished the test round, right? Yeah, we finished the test driving. Yeah. Right. It's so fast, faster than I think. So, what's your comment on this? What do you think? <laughs> I think that、um, you know these EVs get faster and faster, and it's impressive because they are quite big and quite heavy. You know. You, This is a speed that a Ferrari could have done twenty years ago, but here it is in a in a family kind of car. It just blows my mind. And then the brakes were very very impressive. So as soon as I hit the the brake, we stopped within about twenty five meters. That's really、wow. really、uh, yeah impressive. The whole car, the whole package is has impressed me so far. So、uh, yeah, yeah. I just want to say that I'm lucky that I didn't have a breakfast yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me either. Me either. We, I, I don't, um, you know, I owe you guys this. So,、uh, if I can catch up with you in Shanghai, I might have you. I, I wanted to, you know, have breakfast with you when we are doing this next time. And、uh, I'm gonna start with our.、Uh, I'm gonna start a conversation with the、uh, questions about、um, Elliot. How did you get in this new energy vehicle business? Because I've heard that you have a. Architecture background, you know.、Um, <laughs> yes. I watched some of your videos, and、uh, I want to know how did you get in this, and how would you describe the development of China's EV industry and products that you've been through during the last couple of years? Yeah, of course. So I've always been interested in cars since I was a, a young boy. I used to build the model cars. I used to paint them. I, so I've loved cars forever. I moved to China in about 2008, so just after the Beijing Olympics,、uh, and I kept seeing all these new car brands, which people back home in the UK, I'm from the UK, haven't heard of or seen of before. So I thought, well, no one's really talking about this. It's going to, you know, it's going to be one of the biggest auto markets in the world, but no one back home in the UK, the, the Europe, or the US knows anything about these brands. You know, Geely, huge brand in China, no one really knows about them. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll make some videos, put them on YouTube, see if anyone's interested, and then. So I started my own channel called China Driver.、Uh, I've been making videos on that、uh, for a few years,、uh, and then after a couple of years, I bought my own Xiaopeng, my Xpeng G3,、uh, and that's when a channel called Fully Charged、uh, Show 
uh, based in the UK got in touch with me and asked me if I could make videos for them as well uh, about the, the growing Chinese uh, EVs uh, in the market because we'd started seeing some Chinese EVs come to the UK. For example, MG, uh, obviously a British brand originally, bought by a Chinese company, started going over to the UK. So um, we've seen over the kind of past two years that I've been doing videos for Fully Charged that so many more companies are going to Europe now, often going to Norway, you know, BYD, NEO, almost all of them. So um, I think that, you know, the, your second question was around Chinese EVs, how they're kind of changing and growing. They're becoming so much more sophisticated and so quickly. It's amazing to think, I think 2018, when I first started testing cars, there's only a few EVs around. They were quite basic. The technology was OK. But here we are four years later, we've got cars like the Avatar 1.1, which, you know, very luxurious, seems very well made, really competitive price. And I think that's that's how they're going to take over from the legacy brands who are quite slow uh, to, to come to market. You know, they they uh, built and designed this car in quite a short space of time, I think. Right. Yes. Um, in a lot shorter space of time than a, a Western EV brand. So if they can do this in, I don't know, a few years, imagine what they're going to be in two or three years from now. So I think it's it's the speed and the innovation and the technology that's really impressive about the Chinese EV space. Yeah, it's the development process is rapidly fast. Um, so we can see you've been tasting, testing this car and the dynamic driving. I want to know in your experience, because we, we've watched your videos about how you drive this kind of car like BYD, like it is like every uh, really re new release vehicle and EVs in your channel. What do you think is the most interesting part when you running a test like today and reviewing on this? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, sometimes you only get a few hours with a car, so it's very mm -hmm. hard to know what it's going to be like to live with the car i think that you're kind of testing what the initial feeling is that first feeling when you get in the car that first feeling when you drive is a really good kind of way to see what the actual car is is going to be like and i think you know with the the, the avatar that we've driven today you know first impressions are good um mm -hmm. you know i think that uh you know get a feeling of the quality of the materials the the feeling of the cabin if there are any noises um but I think, you know, if you can build a car in China, which is practical, which is affordable and has good technology and the luxury mm -hmm. feeling as well, then generally you're going to have a pretty good sales success. You know, different cars do different things. You know, some BYD cars are a bit maybe simpler and therefore more mass market. Some cars are more upscale. So, um, you know, it's, it's where that car fits in. So where does Avatar, uh, the one one fit into, you know, the whole market? And which direction are they going to go in? So I think I'm looking at it kind of from those angles. Okay, just different angles for a different product. And it depends yeah. on their features, right? That's the That's fun right. part. So yeah. We, 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 yeah, we know that. Um, and as we can see, there are many audience followers on our channel and your channel keep commenting with us on their uh, com comment area. And everybody's excited about this. Um, what do you think of the... Uh, you know, the audience reaction and what does their care about for, you know, a newly released vehicle usually? And are you going to, you know, pick up their comments and their reaction while you are uh, doing a show or, or just like today when, when you are doing some research about the vehicle? Or are you going to care about or just concerned about their interest? I think we can probably both answer this about what people kind of uh, comment about, you know, there's, there's comments about different things, right? So there's comments about mm -hmm. EVs in general versus petrol cars, you know, which is better, which is worse for the environment. You know, that debate continues to go on. Uh, and I think, you know, cars from China, people are like, mm, China's got a car industry and it's it's doing really well. And it's, you know, it's going to Europe and competing with, you know, these big brands. So I think, you know, the comments, you know, very important to see what people's impressions, you know, of these cars are. Mm -hmm. I think maybe with you, Joe, when you're designing a car, you look at, you know, what people's impressions are in the market. You know, you want to get that feedback quite early on, right? Yes. Um, actually, people, well, when, when people buy a car in China, actually, they, uh, the look, actually, the first impression, like you mentioned, <laughs> is the most important 
part. So as you can see that the slick design, the simplicity of the design language is actually touching uh, people's hearts. Mm. And they're really buying this kind of design philosophy mm. because you're seeing lots of luxurious and sophisticated designs, but this is really sleek and really like a technology, you know, hidden inside it. You can feel that it's like apples, uh, mm -hmm. iPhones, something so sleek and so designed well. And yet, yeah. Yeah, and we can see as Joy just mentioned, it's about uh, a really important feature of what this car's vehicle slogan just told us, the very first uh, emotional SUV, emotional in, you know, new energy vehicle. What, what can, how can you describe this, define this emotional, you know, right. Maybe, yeah, maybe we could do it by explaining through the okay. car. Right. Okay. So while, we're we can, while we're talking about it, okay. Further look about it. Yeah. So, how do we define emotional designs? Like, like here, you can see that this is our front feature, and it's really clean. It's really nice, and doesn't have a lot of lines or uh, some crumbs out there. But you can mm -hmm. see there hidden technology inside. There's lidar, there's radar, and ultrasonic, and every sensors hidden in the bumper, in the fender. We hit it very well, we designed it very well, integrated mm -hmm. into the car. So you don't see a liner on the head. You don't see mm -hmm. that, it's very clean. We just have mm -hmm. four cameras in front. So uh, I think that the uh, emotional companion means that it knows you, it feels you. And how do we feel that? You can see this, this is a halo display. In the front, actually, this is a screen. It's like mm -hmm. a, uh, a, a digital screen that shows uh, characters, shows emojis, maybe shows. Okay, we kind of lost them, um, but we are solving on that. We are, you know, and there has been some static on there. It's like Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll wait. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wait. Okay, guys. I we kind of lost the connecting signal with you because there has been some connecting problems. Um, but it's okay right now. Okay. So, okay. um, so you you've been talking about the screen on the on the vehicle, right? You can right. show That's some true. faces. Yeah. This is the screen. You can see oh. this really black, but it is screen. Believe me, <laughs> yeah. I could show a display if I had a car key out there. Uh, mm -hmm. It shows hello, hello, when you come forward, and then it oh. shows goodbye when you leave the car. So this is just the first step, the first step of knowing you. So the second step will we will through uh, the OTA technology and brings you more like it knows. Uh, the car knows this is your birthday, so it sends a birthday cake to you, or it says uh, happy birthday for you. So this is kind of uh, a, a, a thing that people know each other, and then they get to know it better, so they will feel you more and more uh, like inside connection. connections, yeah. right? Yeah. So so basically, uh, this you know kind of a emotional kind of pump functions is about building a connection with you know, caring with kind of a human oriented uh, kind of thing, you know, things like that. Is it, am I right? Yes. Kind of a, yeah, it's like an artificial intelligent, your own a partner in your, like in your parking lot, in your house. I think it's, it's kind of stuff like that. And if what we are going to do the next is about to experience and introduce the vehicle, right? Is that we're gonna sure. do? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. While we are doing this, we can keep on con continue on our topics. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. So what we're gonna do is to review on the car on um, on the parking lot to our audience, and now just get started and what uh, show you show us um, the content. 
And uh, what's the first thing that we wanted to see in this vehicle? Okay, so the first thing we need to introduce you is the exterior design. So, like I mentioned, the front fascia, you have you got a very uh, very unique design with the headlight shaped like this. We call it the F-type uh, headlight. And the, the inspiration of this headlight design is that we took the inspiration from the spaceship. So when the spaceship moving in light speed actually bends the light. So this is the shape that the light get bent. It. So you can see that in the uh, in at night, actually this kind of light is really you know discriminating. The screen, uh, the screen tells everything about this is your car. This is not something like uh, normal in the streets. This is my car. So this very unique design that shows your identity. And then you can see from the uh, from the 40, 43, 45 degree angle. You can see that this is perfectly aligned. You know, this, this, is, this is a very uh, unique, uh, like golden ratio design language. So why we call it the golden ratio? Because the wheelbase size, the wheelbase length and the total length, the ratio of the wheelbase length and the uh, total, total length is about 0 0.61. And the golden ratio is 0 0.618. So we're very close to that portion. And you can see, you can tell that if you want to do this kind of portion, we can find some uh, compared to outside like Lamborghini Urus, right? Lamborghini mm -hmm. Urus, the, the wheelbase ratio, the wheelbase and the full length ratio is about 0 0.59. So we're ahead closer than the golden ratio than the uh, Urus. So you can see that when you're driving this car, like Elia mentioned, it's not like driving a very heavy car or a very big car because the chassis is really tight, really built very strong. And, and the, uh, the, the, the ratio of the, uh, the steering is really quite good. So when you're driving this car outside the street, yeah, you're the, uh, like the, the spotlight in the street, you know? So uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the, the side part of the uh, uh, exterior design. So let's take a look at the, uh, in the, in the back. So I think that this back is one of the most unique yes. exteriors that I've actually seen. Like, right, you've got this, this kind of small back window here. Mm -hmm. And then this is a, a wing which pops wing. up, right? Right. It pops up when you hit about 90. So the police know if you're doing 90. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that in the street. But, Actually, you can do that manually. You can you can lift it up okay. through the uh, center screen. So when you're parked, you want to take some Photoshop. You want to take some photos, uh, beauty shots. You can just lift it up. So yeah, it's it's up to you. So uh, like you, like earlier mentioned, you, you study the uh, architecture, right? The yeah, architecture, yeah. So this design language actually takes a little bit from the architecture okay. design, like the. Uh, flying buttress. Yeah, Buttresses, flying buttress. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I know that you know, from the internet. I Google it. <laughs> so yeah, the flying buttress actually hidden well and integrated in the back. So it is like kind of uh, supports mm. the structure. Yeah. So it feels the back is really um, how do I say? Uh, really dynamic. Yeah. But yet very uh, steady, yeah. stable. Right. So. Yeah, it's, it's so unique. Like there's no, there's no other cars that I know of in no. globally that right. have a, a a back like this. I think it looks, it's very striking on the road. Striking, yeah. Striking. And, yeah. Just, um, I have a questions about the design of the appearance of this shape of the car because uh, we've seen some many electric vehicles. They have this really futuristic style of designing so is that really important to distinguish this kind of design uh, from this traditional petrol vehicle petrol power vehicles you know mostly you know, these traditional petrol power vehicles their designs are kind of different from these evs actually uh, this design is not really new you can see <laughs> lots of in old luxury cars use the real window design, you know, yeah. no, no, not in the like, you know, normal vehicle. Mm -hmm. And also, our um, 
up to you along was inside in Germany by your uh, chief designer, mate. He was uh, one of the most popular designers in the world. And of course, you can see the whole shape of the art after you are one. It's really beautiful. And uh, I would say it's uh, one kind of a classic coming with our new text design. Even see the front, in the nighttime, when the headlamp was on, you can feel on the front when the cars come in, you can feel it's not like a car, like a UFO. Uh -huh. Yeah, really. And uh -huh. on the rear, just we just say, yeah, they have a two straight, you know, the rear lamp across our backyard, and also under the body we have one of the called the rear parking lamps. It's long, and also they have some we call the light, light talking, when you going on and going out. Oh. Yeah. so it's important of this design of this uh, appearance because it's not about. Uh, how the car looks like. It's about some functions. Functioning and yeah. the feelings. And the feelings. That our customer feel. Yes. Okay. Get back to you guys. And uh, what's next? Yeah. What's next is that uh, you can take a look at the rear bumper. You can see mm -hmm. that this ah. is not just a bumper. This is actually integrated with, uh, uh, we call it a scenario lamp. So when you are uh, backing up the car, it shows mm -hmm. the backup uh, light, and when you're leaving the car, actually, there's a light language with mm -hmm. the uh, lamp. So it gives you a very sleek and unique design of these uh, like uh, layers of lights, but actually it tells you more about the language of light. So this is the the back end. So uh, there's a you uh, like very useful thing that this is power lift gates so you can adjust the height of this uh lift gates if you're no. tall you can you can open it like way up but if you're like a smaller person you can just adjust mm -hmm. the height of this tailgate no. so both uh the design of this uh the, the trunk is actually useful and really intelligent for yeah. uh, the user by by supply, right? Yeah, is it is it a big space um, for a vehicle for EVs? Um, Elliot, what do you think? Because yeah, I, I, I can I only can see it from the camera. It's probably quite hard for you guys to see, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean I don't know how many liters this is. Do you know? It's about <laughs> four hundred. Okay, four hundred liters. Right. So I think it's pretty reasonable size. It's not it's not the biggest boot. It's not the highest boot. But you guys do mm -hmm. have a a frunk. So a front trunk, yes, and that is front. quite big. Right. We, if oh. we have a look yeah, at really that, there's a right. really big front um, space. So you've got two spaces on the car. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I closed the, the door. I'll open it again. <laughs> and I think there's a space underneath. Oh, there's some bits under there in case you... Oh, yeah break down or anything so there's extra space right so, uh, we can have a look at the, yeah, the, front, the front the front oh, that's pretty good size right. wow. obviously you know in a nice car this is where the engine is but with evs no. you know mm -hmm. no more engines no more engines so you've got this quite used this is actually quite big right this is we compare yeah. with uh, tesla's front Actually, we're a little bit bigger, like okay. five years more. <laughs> right. And the, the reason we put it right one, here two, in the middle one, is that because two, two, this actually gives us, uh, gives us a, a safety, safetyness. Mm. Because when you, uh, when you maybe got a car accident or something, this protects you mm. from being hit in the car. So it's uh, the utility and the safety part is dying. The, the, the spirit of this design. Yeah. Right. Wow. Good. And we have we have a comment about asking any plans on launching it in U US. I think this one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is, is that a, a question that we can answer right now, or is still on the plan? And it's a uh, yeah. We can. I can we talk uh, about Right. I think that this is an option, but we're studying how to do it because right now it's just first step uh in china right yeah. where we're trying to 
test it out.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah, maybe in the future we could sell it globally because Chang'an is actually a global company. So, yeah,、mm-hmm. we're、uh, we're planning on this, but not right now. <laughs> okay. But、Thank you for the support,、really、you know, the overseas. Yeah, 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 and and, you, and we are really glad to see this because I know we have two bases、uh, globally. And one is in Chongqing, one is in Germany.、Yep. Germany. And、uh, what Mr. Shen just told us in the design part is from the Germany, German yeah, ba- yeah, German base. And so, can you share some information about what Chongqing's manufacturing has、uh, participated in this orbiter? Project in the、oh, product. Actually, I mean, not only in Chongqing, it's in the whole China. You know that、um, Apta is one of the dominant companies, and we have Huawei, we have a CLT, CLT. He's our second largest shareholder. And for Huawei, he's not our shareholder, but one main player to compare with our two companies. And he has、uh, over thousands of engineers working with our. On global design team, which in in Yujie, Chang'an. Ah,、uh, uh, Yujie, Chang'an. Yes. Yeah. And also our plants nearby the、um, global research center as well.、Uh, yeah. And, and of course, this vehicle is built in Chongqing. One hundred percent. One hundred percent built in Chongqing. Just built. This but all, built. Of course, the materials come the whole. Oh, yeah, that I can、yeah. uh, understand, but it on it just showed how Chongqing's you know EV manufacturing is. Uh, really, you know,、uh, developing and adv- advanced、yeah. to build this whole package of、uh, vehicles, right?、Yes. Show the ability to for us to to build this. And there is one picture about me in the Chang'an automobile、um, manufacturer showing them、mm-hmm. the automation industrial、yep. production line. And these are robot arms. They are producing this vehicle EV vehicles、mm-hmm. automate automatically. Really, you know, without any manpower, and this is the other picture of this video of this live stream. I read. I was really impressed about this automation production line because、yeah. I think this is one of the important part for what we mentioned. The other part of this industry is the、uh, intelligent network. You know, the product is one side, one what one thing, but、mm-hmm. the, you know, the. Product line, the manufacturing is another important issues. It connects with many fields of these technologies、yes. of this field, like、uh, artificial intelligence, like the、yeah. whole vehicle of everything.、Yes. You know, connected with other things. You're right. I I can give you one simple example. You think about you know all the material coming from different plants and different area. And we normally in now modern industries we use internet and search systems to tracking all the build coming from you know coming from the the, the all the roads of the part.、Mm-hmm. For example, the one of the parts we've been building our supplier. Okay, we you know scan this and send to the main systems.、Mm-hmm. So the plants we research. Oh, okay, our my parts are ready, and we will search the our transportations to pick up the part. After they land to our、um, plant warehouse and doing the second the scan, so that means the, the,、uh, my part is coming in.、Mm-hmm. So then use the tracking systems automatically use the ABC, what we call the small, you know, and、uh, big and the motor, the robot. parking robot. Yes,、yeah. and the tracking the, the and the screw and tow the parts come to the 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 main manufacturing line. line. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's really automation,、yes. automation system, and uh, um, guys, what are you、right. gonna do next? And、uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you more about the interior design part. So okay, like I mentioned about the、uh, idea from the <clears throat> a technology,、uh, the the architecture, design language. So here's another example of what we call the the keystone design. Actually, it is the center of the car for the IP, from the、uh, from the IP console center. So, this is like really <coughs> symmetric、mm. design from the vortex here. So, the vortex actually the center that、uh, communicates with the user through the voice control command. So, like I said right now,、um, <coughs> maybe we could try it out. 
呃，关窗，呃，升，呃，降下窗户。对，你在。哈哈哈哈哈。Let's see. Okay. Got a shy, so. Yeah,、uh, emotional. <laughs> right. It says, yeah,、uh, yeah. It recommends the, uh, <laughs> it recommends about the、uh, language, but. Right now、mm -hmm. we have connection problems, so we don't try. To,、uh, we cannot try it out. But it's okay. So it's, once you yeah, guys, are, once, you, once the、mm -hmm. driver is matched with this vehicle, we can recognize your voice, right, in your language.、Uh, actually, we recognize both、uh, both sides and also in the back. We have、oh. four microphones that actually detects detects all the commands. So、mm -hmm. I can say that <clears throat> I'm I'm cold, I'm hot, or I can say that please turn up. Turn up the volume down or turn down the volume. So, I could say some commands to the vehicle, and it re、uh, responds、uh, through the、uh, vortex with us.、Mm -hmm. So、oh, this is another、yeah. example of、uh, intelligent and、uh, emotional design.、Okay. I think、um, this is a really, like, from my impression, this is such a unique kind of looking interior. A lot of interiors are just based around. You know, one big screen here and the screen here, and then everything else is quite minimal. But this、mm -hmm. kind of wraps around from the driver's door, you know, through that vortex in the middle, which is quite interesting because it's, you know, it's got no space behind it. Right.、Um, wow. And then there's a screen on the passenger side as well, and it's it's kind of like it's still very minimalist, I think. Right.、Um, yeah. And the material、yeah. material quality is good, but it's、yeah. it's such a unique design. I think、uh, mm -hmm. Avatar have done a, a good job. Yes. And. You can see that this panoramic sunroof here,、uh, under the sun, maybe right now it's like thirty degrees or something.、Mm. We don't feel very hot or something、no. because、uh, it just yeah, it's isolated all the heat outside. Like、right? blocks the UV, like blocks, blocks the heat, right? Transmission lights,、uh, almost ninety nine percent of the、uh, UV lights、mm, are gone.、Okay. So right now in in this cabin, actually, we won't get ten. <laughs> you don't get to see it. So、uh, this is a, a uniqueness of the、uh, interior design, and also there's a hidden, hidden thing that we try to、uh, communicate with our user is the antibacteria material used in this、mm -hmm. uh, normally touched area. So、uh, the the steering wheel and the center console and the door panel, all coated with the antibacterial. Uh, materials and also you can see this is the UV light. So we block the UV light、mm -hmm. on the sun, but we kept it inside here for what?、Oh. Just for cleaning the interior.、Oh. So in the in inside, actually, when people are、uh, leaving the vehicle, you could activate this UV light through the app from、uh, from the、uh, from the、uh, from your phone. So you could keep it clean while the next time you come into this car. So this、wow. is really a unique、uh, thoughtfulness of this design because you know right now the COVID is actually still going on. So we try to give our users a very、uh, clean environment and yet very nicely designed. And the 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 interior I think comes in it comes in different colors, right?、Yes. This is the. Gray, gray, white. I wouldn't. I wouldn't choose this one because it would be too dark. We had the black、wow. ones. We had the black red one ones. And、mm -hmm. Also, this gray one. Yeah. So you can choose from.、Mm -hmm. I think one. Just very quickly, I think one of the most important things is the responsiveness of the screen. Now I get、mm -hmm. in a lot of、uh, EVs, and you know you do this、right. and do this, and it's it's so it struggles. But with this,、yeah. everything's you know super fast, very easy to to navigate yeah, around and、right. and change、mm -hmm. it. So. Super slick. I think that's great. Right. Thanks to Huawei, we actually built on Harmony OS.、Mm. So this <clears throat> this built-in Harmony OS actually has its own market. So、uh, when we、uh, when we update our systems, you could use everything from the ecosystem in Huawei or other、uh, ecosystem as well. So、uh, right now we have sorry we have the、uh, internet connections. Not not really clear. So right now, <clears throat> it's just a beta version, but you can see this is really sleek, really responsiveness to the、uh, to the users、uh, touch. So this right, and actually we're trying we're trying to、uh, tell more about <laughs>、yeah. this 
Yeah, this a, uh, AC uh, this is cool. control. Right. This is you can direct the direction you can direct the direction of the wind yes using your finger so you know if i want the passenger one to go that way that way that way yes. that way that's really wow. and just touch, that's really quite unique yeah, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. right here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <you> use mine. <laughs> you're stealing the my back, air conditioning yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah especially in when you're sitting in the back seats uh these directions of the winds are really important you don't want to want it to blow in on your knee right when you're no, sitting in no. the back seat yeah no, no you don't want and I'm really curious because I drive myself. I drive a, a pa traditional petrol powered vehicles because these electric vehicles I've tried sometimes. But I want to know um, with all this information, uh, what are these functions on your site? Um, what do you think is the most important when uh, for the interior? Uh, like this, is that the screen? Is that the whole uh, intelligent system or this? you know, self-cleaning function or others? Um, I, I'll answer from my point of view first. So I think for me, I, you know, I don't pick the car for the intelligent technology. I know it's a terrible thing to say. I'm mm -hmm. maybe a bit more of a traditional car driver and I like to <laughs> have control of the car myself. I like, I don't really like the self-driving so much. Mm -hmm. So for me, that feature is not, I wouldn't buy a car based on that. I would buy a car based on, um, you know, probably the screen, because having big maps, big navigation, I'm not familiar with, you know, streets in Shanghai and China and having a big map is, is so important for me. Yeah. And then just generally the overall feeling of the cabin, is it good quality? Is my kid going to ruin it? <laughs> Which you probably will. <laughs> biscuits everywhere. Um, and then I suppose, yeah, connectivity with an app, I think is quite important. So wow. one of the best things about having an EV is that when it's really hot outside and your car's parked outside and you're leaving mm -hmm. the restaurant, you can turn on the air conditioning. Yes. So when you get yeah. into the car, it's nice and cold. Yes. And that is by far one of the best features, I think, of, of an EV. I was saying in winter mm -hmm. as well, if it's too cold, you can heat it up. So I think there's these kind of neat technology features, which are, mm -hmm. are so important in, in EVs that ICE cars just don't have. Yeah. Just... Joe, probably completely different for you, I think. <laughs> well, from the uh, product, <laughs> product side of the uh, uh, comments about what the most important thing is that <clears throat> actually this car never gets old. When you buy this car or when you buy the petrol car, actually, it, you know, the, the value decreases mm -hmm. at, when you pick up the car at the dealer. So when you pick up the car at Avatar, actually, the value stays the same, maybe a little bit more because, you know, the battery mm -hmm. is really... Uh, increasing price really increasing really high but actually we keep the car up to date uh, through the uh, update of the system or we add some features for the ADAS functions so in fact every day you use this car you try to um, to know your car or know what's going on inside we keep updating it so we know you you know the car and we know each other very well so this is like a whole family the whole ecosystem really about because we try to communicate with our user through the product through some events like this test event so we try to communicate and then find out what's the most important thing for the users so like Elliot you, you, you really like to drive it on the, on the road and yeah. feel it right yeah. so we could update our steering wheels mm. maybe some ratios of mm. this driving uh, experiences or the braking experiences mm. actually this is all updatable so when you complain about wow I, I don't need this kind of acceleration it's too fast so we can maybe put a turtle mode <laughs> <laughs> turtle yeah mode. maybe you, you can drive slow or yeah. you have very important person in the back you don't <laughs> want her to throw up you can you can just use turn on the gentle mode maybe so this is the uniqueness of uh ev cars uh out here in this market and it's it's, right. it's like you say it's all driven by software yes. and, and you know you pro can probably update the hardware as well in the future i know that some right. ev companies are thinking about updating their hardware yes so you still have the same car but you update the chip or you mm -hmm. update the wheel or whatever it is and then the software yeah. is always updating so if you wanted to i was complaining and i, I want <laughs> turtle mode you say, right, <laughs> you've got this custom setting you can turn it right. on in here 
Yeah. And it's just like that. Whereas right. an ice car, you just, yes. once, you, once you've got it, that's it. And also, uh, this car actually you could share with 10 people. Mm. So maybe you can have friends who want to test it out. You could just share the key to them. Oh, so okay. It's like, uh, it's like when sharing, like you're sharing some experience and sharing your uh, product with mm. a friend. Mm. So yeah, this is something cool to do uh, with the EV cars. That's nice. Right. You don't need to about you don't need to worry about privacy part because we got it all covered. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, we got it all covered, so you don't uh, need to be pictured or you know worry about being videotaped. So this is like a very unique yes. function. Yeah, just turn it off. <laughs> you record your experience, driving experience, right? Can you right. Uh, most uh, function is for to make it make it driver focus on the driving and then make inside the of the cab on the back side. Oh, yeah. oh, it's for safety consideration. For safety consideration. Okay. Um, so what you guys just shared about is your experience and insights about the advantage part, advantage uh, of this EV. Um, I have a question for both of you. Uh, first, Elliot, is, you know, Chongqing, you know, we mentioned about Chongqing aims to build a world-class EV and intelligent and connected uh, cluster, mm. uh, industry cluster. So what do you think is the, you know, the advantages of this city? Have you been to Chongqing uh, to catch up yeah. with this Eastern China area? You know, mostly uh, markets and products are, con con you know, concentrate on, uh, focus yeah. on the Eastern China's markets. But Chongqing is uh, one of the most, I think one of the most manufacturer industry in in, uh, in china of this ev of uh of course of the traditional vehicle so what do you think of the advantages of this city to build this kind of industrial clusters worldwide yeah it's a really yeah a big yeah a big so, goal i think um so i went to chongqing to test drive the in the baidu apollo program mm -hmm. yeah so that was with the self-driving um buses uh in each one, I think. I think that's the name of it. And so you've got this completely connected kind of road network, which um, makes traffic so efficient. You know, the buses were in commercial operation. And I think, you know, if Chongqing continues along that part, path of having this connected city, smart mm -hmm. city, the technology will come, come around that. So if mm -hmm. Chongqing gets known as, you know, building, you know, these the smart infrastructure, that mm -hmm. means that people are using maybe cars less, maybe mm -hmm. using public transport more, maybe using micro mobility. If you have a truly intelligent city and that if Chongqing can be the base of that, I think that's probably the advantage you have over the, the cities on the east. So the cities on the east, obviously, you know, they're doing a lot of you know, individual car ownership, you know, big fancy cars. If you can focus on, on that, I think that's, mm -hmm. that's going to be you know, you look at the cities perhaps in, in Europe or um, maybe not so much the US, but in Europe, say Amsterdam, you know, everyone rides bikes. You yeah. know, if you can have an intelligent transportation network based around that. And if Chongqing can provide the technology for that, I think that's that's a, a good area for growth for them. Yeah. And also we, we just shared, we have some really um, uh, advantages to experience the car uh, for building some places for, you know, for these EVs to experience on the road. We have one video yeah. about how the uh, Avatar 11 was trying to drive in Chongqing's Dianjiang district. Watch.
的嘛，这个是也是一个 frigate section。哦、oh. ，Okay, okay, it's a perfume. Um, perfume. 香薰。哦，刚才你是看的那个镜。The perfume is also connected yeah, with the、right. the fragrance, right? Actually, we uh, this is not a standard feature. You need to buy for it, but this is really、okay. good that you could choose all the scents you want, and this is light. This is natural.、Yeah. The the、yeah. the density of the the scents, so this is strong. So you could generate a environment with a scent. Not just、wow. the temperature. You could you could put it some scent into it. So this is some cool features to add on. Wow, and and you have sweet three of them. It's really rare in in vehicles because I I bet some people won't have that that much、uh, perfumes in their houses. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know. no, actually, people、yeah. buy people buy some uh some, a car fragrance on in Taobao、mm-hmm. or some e-commerce platforms.、Yeah. But we build it inside, so you don't see any、um, strange bottles,、mm-hmm. you know,、mm-hmm. in in outside. Actually,、yeah. the fragrance comes from the、uh, the vent, so it smells like very natural, like you're being in the house、mm-hmm. or being some、uh, some fancy restaurant something. So this is like,、mm-hmm. yeah, something we 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 think ahead when you、mm-hmm. when you're driving or when you、something. stay at. Right. Yeah, something smells like really fancy, not just cheap colognes kind of yeah. thing. Yes. Okay, I think yeah, I think it's necessary for when you are creating a really nice and comfortable environment in when you are sitting driving the car. So what's next? Hmm. So <laughs> do you want to hear more about the interior or anything else?、Um, I think we can. From... Oh, I think we can talk about something about this、um, intelligent platform, the CHN. And I I know that our domestic audience and、uh, they are really care about this because I watched a lot of、uh, review videos about this car, like in one or one or two months ago. Everybody just trying to get in the car and、uh, introduce this CHN, you know, system. So they want to figure out what's the biggest feature of this system, and what can we get as odd as clients when we are driving this car from this system? What can we benefit from this system? Okay, actually. Okay, so Joey, I,、uh, we we want to ask Mr. Shen to answer、right. this, and、okay. you guys can add some information about this. Okay. Actually, such、okay, cool. and not radio system. He's the one of what we call the platform. Platform. platform, okay. Yeah, platform in software and hardware is what we on the end. You can see it's a whole vehicle in here, and、uh, the search and for avatar for our first vehicle even one, obviously, it's an all new three all new things. One is a new um architecture, and、mm-hmm. one is a strong computing power,、mm-hmm. and the last one is a high range. High range means our you know battery can. Use them for much much more、okay. because our first vehicle E11, E11, and the we use a 96 kW power cell.、Mm-hmm. You can reach CO COTC range is 550. Okay. Yeah, and also、um, later we have a one extra long one that's coming out.、Mm-hmm. Let's use 116 kilowatts battery pack. That means you can and use drive more than 620 or 618 kilometers for just for charge, one charge. Ch- one charge. Yeah, and so, also the new tech we use is what we call、um, the high volt recharging, and we can charge our batteries in ten minutes. So you can get two hundred kilometers range. Huh? Yeah, in ten minutes. Two hundred kilometers range in for recharging. In, in recharging ten minutes, that really a fast speed, idiot.、Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it is, and I think I actually did a video fully charged this last week, and、uh, we went to GAC,、uh, the、mm-hmm. Guangzhou Automotive Company, and they're doing a very similar thing. I think they've got the world's fastest charging, and the difference is, you know, a lot of ICE drivers or petrol drivers say they can't drive an EV because the charging times are too long, even if it's thirty minutes. But with this extreme fast charging, like with this car, with the GAC, to do it within ten minutes. 
it means that no longer becomes an issue. Um, and I think that would be a real game changer for people switching from ICE cars to EVs. So if more companies do it, like uh, the Avatar, that's only mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, and it's really important, as you mentioned, the smart city infrastructure, uh, facilities and utilities in the city. You know, uh, we can see in a lot of cities in China, we have more uh, electric uh, vehicles infra infrastructure mm -hmm. applying in every corner of the city. And I think that's important for people to drive the EVs. You have the supporting, you have the facilities for this. I think that's what people are con still concerning about comparing with the traditional ones. It's more easier to, you know, get the gas in the yes, car. Yes. But um, I think in the future, everybody just uh, kind of get to know how important this problem will be solved. Um, okay, so what do you think? What, what do you guys think about this questions about the CHN when you are driving this, especially because Mr. Shen just shared us with some really professional information. Um, and, but we kind of want to know what's your, uh, you know, experience when you are driving this based on this CHN platform. Um, maybe Joe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think... Uh, <laughs> One of the most important character of CHN is that we don't use the old traditional ECU structure for our e architecture. We use the domain control units, so which means it separates from the powertrain, the chassis, the, the car body controls, and all the uh, ADAS functions and all the cockpit uh, features. So we could upgrade. Up, upgrades the experience in the, uh, independently or as a, as a whole that we could we could generate a big upgrade to the to the chassis to the car so in fact we're we're trying to build something that is like we're buying a MacBook or we're buying an iPad or some some uh, uh, digital electronics devices we try to upgrade when we find something that is really helpful for the users. So the CHM provide this uh, kind of opportunity to let us do this for you. So you could just use one click on the button in, in the screen so the car upgrades itself. So when you drive on the road, actually you use all types of these uh, features in the car. But when you upgrade the car, you can feel there's a difference in the system or in the driving uh, ex uh, experiences. So this is like uh, when you're driving an IC cars, actually you don't have that kind of experience before, or you need to pay a lot of money to upgrade for the yeah, maybe power truck or chassis. But in the EV car, actually you don't need to pay that much or you need to pay, you need to pay zero <laughs> you have to get the upgrade. Mm. So it's very cool. So uh, the the station platform, uh, like the, the darling mentioned about the, the fast charging, and fully upgrade, mm -hmm. and also the safety is really uh, our big, uh, big oh, uh, part. Big right, yeah. right. So uh, our our chassis design is really solid, really rigid because we use a lot of aluminum uh, technologies in, in uh, so the lightweight technologies inside. So. This is almost maybe 5,000 pounds, but really compared to other uh, competitors, we are really light. Maybe it's not that very light, but we're, we're, we're light. You know, <laughs> we're not that fat actually. <laughs> so when you're driving it, you feel that, that this is not a big car. This is a really compact, really a nice to have, nice to drive car. So this is the CHN we, 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 we put in, uh, we put the, the thought of the safetyness and put the thought of the uh, technology side and also the uniqueness design of this platform because uh, this is a stretchable uh, wheelbase. So we could stretch from 2,800 millimeters from 3,100 millimeters. So actually the height is accessible too. So you get this platform but you can create lots of segments, products like sedans, SUVs, MPVs, or crossover. 
you can imagine this platform's uh, opportunities to be. So this is the uh, beauty of this association brings to us. Okay, about the last one that I can, I just kind of lost it, like the concept. Okay, can you, right. Yeah, I want to ask uh, um, yeah, Mr. Sen to briefly introduce this concept and do you have anything add you can share about this? Um, not much. <laughs> Joe already done my job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, with, with nothing to share, well, just I'll about this vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys, and uh, we've seen you uh, doing this uh, test run in Shanghai, and we are really glad to have you guys with us, Elliot. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, watch Elliot's new content about this vehicle because he's about to shoot in, about to shoot some clips and uh, footages about this and make and, and create a, some kind of big uh, topics about this. And everybody is a is a you know, looking forward to watch this kind of content because I, I think this is the first, you know, the uh, English version of live streaming about this car in, on YouTube, yeah. I think. <laughs> so we kind of did an innovative uh, content about this vehicle. I'm really glad to have you guys with us today and doing this for us. As we just shared in this in the beginning on September 8th, Chongqing released the development plan to build a world-class intelligent connected and neural energy vehicle industry cluster. This requires the lead and supporting from this government the technology innovation in the coordinated development with relative industry like, like we just shared. The market should be really open, wider, more international cooperation and trading must com uh, you know combine with. And the core of this industry is about achieving the carbon peaking and carbon neutrality goals in Chongqing and in China. And also, we are hoping this uh, to see this because it's really deeply related to our lives. So. Um, the last question is, do you think it's more environmental, uh, responsible or re environmental friendly to choose uh, EV, you know, like Avatar 11? Uh, how much time do you have? Because it's, it's, a, it's a complicated topic, but right. mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, from my point of view, yes, you know, I think, yes, it does. There's a lot more CO2 involved in the manufacture of the, the batteries in the car. Uh, than perhaps an ICE vehicle. But then if you think mm -hmm. about things like local pollution, so when you're driving past on a street, you know, next to a school in a petrol car, you know, all of those fumes, all that pollution is going into those, you know, in, into the kids' lungs. So I think mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's no real good answer. In, in, in reality, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us should not be driving personal cars so much. That really is the answer. But if you do have to drive a car, I think an EV is definitely the way forwards. Okay, what about you, Joe? Yeah. Oh, you obviously Actually, want it. <laughs> yes, like I earlier mentioned, the manufacturing of the battery is really um, not that, you know, environmental friendly, but the result, actually the car running in the streets is really clean. The, the clean energy is the solution to our earth, to, to, the, to this planet. So in fact, when you, uh, when you go into a maybe a basement or a parking lot, you feel the heat because mm. all the combustion engines are getting out of heat. But try to imagine that this is a pure EV parking lot. So maybe there's a cool mm. yeah, wind inside the <laughs> parking lot, maybe. So this is like a very good environment that we need to picture it and we need to try to, uh, to achieve it. So EV or maybe the hydrogen cars, maybe in, uh, in a few years, I think those kind of clean energy is the solution to, to stop the pollution from, from our planet. Mm. Yeah, so are they going to be uh, the kind of same test run in Chongqing, applied in Chongqing of this vehicle in this month? I think there are lots of cities that opens the, the, the opportunities to test drive about 10 cities uh, starting from maybe next week. So Chongqing will be must 
a, a must uh, have city. So yeah. we really enjoy that you could come to our store, come to the uh, experience center to have a reservation for the test drive and truly, you know, engage to this vehicle because through the camera, maybe you cannot see what we see here. The materials, the uh, fit and finishes, actually it's pretty great, <clears throat> but you need to really drive it first yourself. Yeah. It's really important to experience the driving before you purchase this vehicle. Jeez. Yeah, because it's um, above all, it's a, it, is it like a high brand, high brand uh, product, right? Kind of. No, it's a pure electronic. Yeah, it's um, pure electronic, but yeah. it's, uh, I mean, the level of the, uh, the price. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to test it before you buy it. So thank you, guys. Uh, I think that's it for today. And uh, I'm going to release you guys for have a rest. And I'm going to end our show today with a video released about this uh, vehicle, Avatar 11, and also the uh, CHN uh, platform with explanation of the uh, technology behind it. So thanks for watching this episode today. Please like, share, and subscribe to iChongqing's channel, to Elliot's channel, and keep, um, you know, focusing on this newly released, uh, newly launched uh, vehicles after 11. So thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Shen. Thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you, you Elliot. See you guys next Bye. time. Bye. 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 Bye.
那像这些功能，像这